Now we all know that those M1 Macs are coming with limited ports. So should you invest in a budget hub to expand your workflow? Well, I got some data. Let's go. What is going on you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today what I want to do is make a recommendation for a budget hub so that you can kind of get started to increase your workflow. Now, for those of you that may have a response as far as some of the powered uh, hubs that are from CalDigit, which I completely love, and I think that those are great setups. However, we're working in the sense of budget right now. I am in the camp of buying it nice or buying it twice. However, these hubs I have been testing for a while. This particular one I've had for a couple of months and the other one that I have that's attached to my monitor I've actually had for a couple of years and use that on my MacBook Pro daily without any issues. So we're in the budget realm and that's kind of where we're going to stay right now. But again, I'm aware of the other options. Now, a couple of things that we do need to be mindful of is that some of the data that's coming out, knowing that we have two Thunderbolt 3 ports, whether a MacBook Air, MacBook Pro, and even the Mac Mini that I have, so there have been some statements or some questions about whether those two ports are actually sharing the same bus or the same controller, that there's only like one controller uh, that they're sharing. And so essentially like if you're connecting two um, external hard drives or whatever that you're connecting it to, it's actually sharing that bus. And actually, I think we all know what it's like to be crammed on a bus. I mean, you know, <laughs> moving on. So what I know is that there are two controllers and that they are two separate buses as far as those Thunderbolt uh, 3 con um, setups. So just keep that in mind. We're not bottlenecking into one. So if some of you had that question, I just wanted to answer it. Now, one of the recent videos that I did on these external uh, SSDs is the fact that these are also very easily uh, obtained. And again, I'm also testing some faster ones but that is still in testing right now. However, we know when we connect it directly to the Mac mini that it, you're going to get closer to the advertised speeds of what these drives are supposed to uh, perform at. However, when you plug it in to a, a hub like this, those speeds are going to decrease. And that's what I wanna talk about as far as your workflow is concerned. And I'll try to get through this as best as I can with the data that I have and the testing that I did. Now, using this hub from Hutu, which actually has three USB type A, it has an SD card slot and a micro SD or TF card slot, which is great because you can also put those cards in and have them read simultaneously. It has HDMI, which supports 4K at 30 Hertz refresh rate and 60 Hertz at 2K, which may not seem like a lot, but again, that's just something if you need those extra ports, I think for many of us, a, a 30 Hertz at 4K refresh rate would be fine. And then yes, on the back of it, it does have USB-C. Uh, and so you can actually have pass-through power on this particular one um, at, a, at 100 watts. So if you're using it on your laptop, then you'll be able to actually just plug your laptop in through the back and connect it there and have it charged. Now, diving into my notes, I can tell you that I took a 4K timeline, one of my videos that I recently posted, and what I did is I got rid of the render files, I deleted the render files, started from just the timeline itself, and we had the extreme SSD plugged into the back of the Mac Mini, and I was able to render that video in five minutes and 53 seconds. Now, something else to think about with the advertised speeds of being at a thousand, over a thousand megabytes read and write, here's the thing. So during render, when you're using these programs, you're not really going to get the full advertised speed. So the peak read speed was at 423 megabytes while it, and, and it eventually dropped to an average of around 121 megabytes. And the peak write speed was 187 megabytes, dropping down to about 159. Now, of course, looking at those temps during the render, we had gotten about a 38 degree Celsius readout, which translates to about 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And of course, these NVMe drives will run a little bit hotter because I do have some different numbers on the T5 when we compare those two. Now, when we went ahead and plugged in the hub into the back of the Mac mini into that USB type C Thunderbolt 3 port, what we found was when I rendered it, removed all of the render files, started back over on that timeline, 
we got 12 minutes and 51 seconds on that render because essentially what you're doing, that bottleneck exists inside of this hub because it's really only handling at USB 3.0 speeds. So again, not directly plugged into the Mac mini, the SSD that is, but the hub. So that's where the bottleneck is happening. And so that's a significant increase. I mean, that's more than twice as far as the time is concerned. Now, for some of you, that may not be a problem because maybe during render, you kind of walk away or, or something like that. And maybe that's not much of an issue. However, I would recommend if you're not editing on the internal and you're using the SSD, if you can render directly through that Thunderbolt 3 port, that's definitely gonna help. Now, the interesting thing is, as far as the peak read and write, so for the read, we were getting about 34 to 36 megabytes uh, per second with a peak write of 37 megabytes per second, which is a significant drop in the read and write. Obviously, nowhere in the stratosphere of being close to those advertised speeds. Now, the hub itself can definitely heat up, and I actually found it 27.2 degrees Celsius, which translates to about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. However, the SSD, it was 42.6 degrees Celsius and about 108 degrees Fahrenheit. And the thing is, is with these NVMe drives, as I said, they get a little bit hotter. As far as the thermal management's concerned, if it sustains those higher temperatures, which it can actually go higher, but you could notice some throttling based on that, that thermal management that's occurring within that drive. Now, here is another bit of interesting information, which I'm actually not surprised. So what we decided to do was, and I mean, we meaning me, I connected the hub to the Mac mini and then connected both the T5 and the SanDisk SSDs and getting a transfer, transferring over 400 gigabytes of data from one to the other using the hub. Uh, yeah, I would never recommend that you ever do that because we were getting a pop-up of about six hours to make that transfer, which ended up really just being five hours once it was all done. And I, I let it transfer and it, it didn't hang, it didn't disconnect. Um, and so the interesting thing is, is that the, the average read, so the T5 read was about 25 megabits uh, per second, which it's not writing, so nothing's happening there. And for the extreme, it was 20.5 as far as uh, the write, so writing that information. And so the temp on the hub was 27.1 degrees Celsius, 81 degrees Fahrenheit. And the temps on the SSDs, so 31.3 degrees Celsius or 88 degrees Fahrenheit on the T5. And then of course, with the SanDisk, we know it's gonna be hotter. It was 47.9 degrees Celsius, or that translates to about 118 degrees Fahrenheit. And again, I also think that that could be some of that slowdown as some of that thermal throttling could be occurring inside of that drive. Now, moving over to a more realistic workflow, which I would recommend plugging the SSDs directly into your machine. And what we were finding is that same 400 gig folder with all that data actually took about 18 minutes to transfer. And so we were seeing uh, the T5 as far as the, the what was happening there, about 365 uh, megabytes as far as that transfer is concerned. And then of course the extreme accepting that, that data, it was fluctuating between 380 and 400 megabytes as it's writing to the drive. Now, the interesting thing is, is for the temps on the T5, we found that we were at 35 degrees Celsius or 95 degrees Fahrenheit and 40 degrees Celsius and 104 degrees on the extreme. So a little bit lower on the extreme. And of course, obviously it's because it's not sitting there um, trying to have that transfer happen over hours. And I think that the thermal management is, is certainly more efficient. So why recommend these hubs? And what I can tell you is that the fact that these are USB type C, Thunderbolt 3 compatible, meaning like they plug in. So it's USB type C, it will plug into your iPad, or you can actually get an adapter to have it plug into your iPhone or smartphone. Um, and of course, most of the Android, you can actually just plug directly into the Android because if you have additional peripherals, you have a webcam, you have microphones and other things that you use in your workflow, it may be nice to actually have that. And of course, obviously the fact that we don't have SD card readers. So having that built into that hub. And like I said, I have it connected to my monitor, which it just sits up there. It is Velcroed in and I, that's how I have my SD cards um, read. And of course, no issues there because I'm not transferring 
uh, a terabyte of information or even like several hundred gigabytes of information from the SD card all at once. So it actually works in my particular workflow. And again, like I said, I am all about buying it nice or buying it twice, but I do think that these Hutu hubs are a good way to go. There are several uh, other options. And so I can link up a couple of other options, but if you're on a budget, and you need some extra connections for those peripherals, it may be the way to go. All right, so I'm gonna keep testing here so that I can provide you that value. You go out there and do those things. You keep rocking those faces. Hit me up in the comment section below because this is where I am. Hang out with me over there on Twitter. Thanks so much for your time and attention on this one, and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.